a pine cone quilt, well, it's also called a cuckoo quilt, a pine burr quilt, a target quilt because of the center, it looks like a target, bullseye also, and prairie points because these little triangles people also call prairie points. But the pine cone got the name because of the shape of a pine cone. If you look at that brown pine cone, it has that circular pattern going around. And that's how it really got its name. This quilt is different from the regular, well, the quilt as people usually know a quilt. This is not three layers in the sense of you have a top, the batting, and a piece under the back. This quilt is very heavy, but each piece is folded so that it gives some thickness and weight to it. And then it's all handmade. So you can see the stitching and it's all stitched on a base. You have to start in the center. And this grows and grows like each row. You have to add a piece or two pieces for it to spread out. Otherwise, it comes out like this. It's all bunched up in the center. A young lady showed me these quilts one day when I was doing a fair downtown around the circle. And she said, I bought these quilts from a woman down the street. And I said, I'd love to see them. And she showed them to me. They were so beautiful. I had never seen anything like it. They were so colorful and just interesting. So I said, I'd love to meet this lady. And she told me she would take me to her house. And it turned out it was a house that was just before the school board. And I was passing it every day going to work. And I didn't know that. So when I saw those quilts, something just came over me and said, you've got to learn how to make that. I went to Miss Sue's house. Asked her if she would teach me. She didn't agree right away. I had to kind of, she had to warm up to me a little bit. And then she taught me. And my first lesson, I have pictures of my very first lesson where we're putting the first two pieces on this, a king size sheet. So I think a lot of people wouldn't have the patience to go with it. And I thought, I asked her, did you teach other people? And she said, no, no one had ever asked her before. So that's the thing we have to remember to ask people too when we want to learn something. So I stayed with her. Six years, I sat at her side, sewing each week and learning how to make this. I use a three inch needle, a doll needle. It's usually three to three and a half inches. I use um, a number 10 crochet thread. Usually I use white and it's all hand stitched. And sometimes the fabric is really hard to pull through. So I use a plier to pull the needle through. I think I like it because I can sit still for five to 10 hours at a time. It's quiet. You get inside your own head when you're sitting there sewing. And you don't hear the humming of the sewing machine either that zzz that you hear all the time. So it's peaceful and quiet. And it's very good exercise for your hands. If you're arthritic or you find that you're starting to get tight. My hands have loosened up quite a bit in doing this. So um, it gives me a chance to be in the room with my husband at the same time too, because when I was sewing, I'd have to go to another room to use a sewing machine. This way he's sitting in his chair and I'm sitting there and he's watching me and he gets a kick out of watching me changing the colors or he might suggest try a different color. So it just, it turns out to be very relaxing. It's almost like meditation. And I noticed that I'm better off at long periods at a time. I can't pick it up for an hour or two hours because you lose your rhythm. You get into a rhythm and it's just like, ah, you just go with it. Well, Miss Sue said that her grandmother taught it to her. And then um, I saw it online where the G's Bend quilters in G's Bend, Alabama, use the pine burr quilt and they make smaller circles and put it all on a quilt. And then the Native American tribe in North Carolina called the Lumbee tribe, they use it on their regalia. So they'll wear it like a breastplate almost and on a shawl. And it's beautiful on their aprons. You see this diamond shape repeated often in a lot of African art pieces too. I started them in 2004 and I have made 20 quilts since then. And I, let's see, I've been sewing for almost, almost 20 years, 19 years now, making these quilts. I can do one a year and then sometimes two. I mean, they're not all king size. This one is, a, I think, a 60 by 60. So that goes a little bit faster.
Well, this is my book, Pinecone Quilts, Keeping Tradition Alive and Learn to Make Your Own Heirloom. So I think you will really enjoy this book because it tells you a little bit about the history, the history that I found out. Many of you will look at this quilt and say, oh, I remember my grandmother used to make something like that, or my mother used to make something like that. You'll find them in pillows, but mostly vintage styles. And I think you will really enjoy making them. And then I have some pictures of vintage quilts in here that I know you'll enjoy. And you'll probably recognize some of the styles. So please, once again, go buy my book, C&T Publishing, Pinecone Quilts, Keeping Tradition Alive. Thank you.